morning. Good morning. What a great conference, right? This has been a, a good time for me, at least. Uh, Kevin and I, after going to Ignite last night, um, realized that this, if you were to, went all day yesterday and all day last night to, to Ignite, we will be presentation number 25. So that's a lot to take in in, in 24 hours. Um, this is going to be about an hour-long presentation. Um, we're going to have plenty of time for questions at the end, but we're just going to hammer through it. And um, if, if you have questions, we have lots of slides. So just write down, jot some things down, and we'd love a conversation at the end of this. Yeah. So uh, this presentation, if you saw in the program, is, uh, it says, is how you work getting in the way of great work, evolving our process to create higher efficiency, better results, and a more cohesive team effort. So that's what we're doing here. This is not the email marketing section. So if you want to do that, that is upstairs. We're going to be talking about process, which sounds a little bit boring to me, but it's going to be awesome. That is me. So uh, who am I? I'm Kevin Comer. I'm one of the co-founders of Ample, uh, and I am also a writer. So a writer amidst all you developers and designers and hopefully a couple writers out here. Um, so I graduated from Ohio University and have been writing for the past 12 years. Um, as I said, I don't, I don't love process, but what I do love is, is understanding how people interact and, and how the team aspect of things work. Um, I am the oldest of five and the, and the oldest grandchild of 24, so I've been spending my life understanding uh, the, uh, the different ways that people work and what people's skills are. Um, for instance, uh, my, me and my brothers go down to our farm every year. We have a thing called the outdoor games. And uh, we, all, we all practice survival skills in a competition. So I know which one of us can shoot a shotgun better than the other. And I know who can start a fire. And I know that if the zombie apocalypse comes, you guys better stay away from our farm because we got to cover. <laughs> <laughs> Kevin's the winner, by the way, because he's the only one that's still alive. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, okay, so uh, I am a process junkie, unlike Kevin. Um, and so uh, you, you would see that then I won because I convinced Kevin to be here to talk with me. Um, but it, it has, like the process thing has even trickled down into personal life stuff. My son loves three things, Legos, Star Wars, and Lego Star Wars sets that he cannot put together himself because it's you know not age appropriate. So I've spent the better part of Christmas Day for the last five years putting together Millennium Falcons and all sorts of uh, fun stuff. And it first started with him like tearing apart the box and you know getting all these Legos on the floor and, and just being super frustrated. And then then, it, then the, the process junkie kind of started coming in saying, no no no, you got to put it, you got to get a flat surface. All right, let's see, number one, okay, book one, okay, one. All right, now we open it up. Oh, see, these pieces are light gray, and these pieces are medium gray, and these pieces are bluish gray, and we organize them in this, and then, and, you know, even, even to that extent, like, it just makes working so much easier in putting together um, these, these terrible toys. Um, even, even that's better. So I'm trying to teach him, you know, working smarter, not just, just harder. Uh, yeah, I'm Rob Sloan. I'm a uh, UC grad from uh, uh, graphic design at, at DAP. Uh, I've been designing for about 13 years, and um, I've helped build interactive teams at Hyperquake and also at Barefoot, and now I'm at Ample. Okay, so Ample, we're a 10-person shop, Cincinnati homegrown. Um, websites, applications, traditional marketing, we do a little bit of everything, but we're focused mostly online. And uh, I think one of the benefits that we can offer you guys right now about process is that we're a, we're a small shop and we have to move fast and we have to be nimble and we don't have specific, uh, we don't have people that just focus on UX or just focus on marketing. We all have to do a little bit of everything and understand what everybody else does so that we can move forward quickly and get, get the job done. Yeah, and being co-founders, that has allowed us a, um, some good things like being able to change your process. You know, it, it, it sounds obvious, but um, that, that's the reality. And um, you might ask why we chose to co-present. Um, well, Kevin and I have become really good friends. We, we've known each other for about maybe like six years and have, have worked together for that long. And it just seems to make sense if we're talking about teams and process. And as we present creative and all th those types of things, we do it together. So why not do this together? 
And it creates a little bit of difference in just not listening to me talk the whole time, which is awesome. Okay, so if I hate process, how did Rob convince me to be here? And the answer is uh, process dictates my life and, and my ability to enjoy it. So it, it's, how, it's how we work, it's how expectations are created, uh, and it's how we get, get home by the end of the day to make sure that we can get everything completed. So th this idea of, of insanity, doing the same thing, that's kind of where process comes from, right? Like where our process began where, from what we had done before, from what we learned in school, from what we learned uh, from the previous jobs, previous agencies, uh, and in some cases, how we built print materials and, and how that applied to that. And it, it, uh, it definitely was not working, but, but we'll show you why and how we, how we altered that. Yeah, and, and to be clear, this is not a, okay, take this process, and we have this great slide in these series of slides, and now go do this and apply it to your process because everybody's projects are the same. That, that's, not this, that's not the kind of talk we're giving. We're simply saying, hey, this is where we were. This is where we're at now. We think where we're at now is way better than where we were. And there's probably some things that, that you all could take from it and, and learn and, and apply to your own, your own uh, work day and, and processes at, at work. OK. So this is our old process. This is where we started. It makes a lot of sense, actually. SOW, the statement of work, the contract of work, that this is what you're going to do. OK. From there, you're going to create a strategy. That makes sense. You know your budget, so why not make a strategy based on the budget and the expectations? Then you create wireframes, which is going to be our blueprint for how we're going to make the actual site. That makes sense. And then based on that, of course, since that's going to get approved immediately, now we can create the concepts, and we can understand what the concepts are going to be because they're going to reflect the wireframes and reflect the strategy and be within budget. And then based on that, since that'll get approved immediately, since all those decisions have already been made, we can create the design in that stage. And then I can create the copy, the most important part of the process. <laughs> From there, since everything's been approved and everything works and everything fits exactly the way we decided it was going to in the wireframe stage, we can develop. Developing happens with plenty of time. Testing, which probably takes a minute, and then we launch. Easy, right? Start a company, just do this. It's gonna be easy. <laughs> Done, all right, you're welcome. Right, Rob? Um, yeah, okay, so um, this, this process is, is flawed. And here's, here's just a, we're gonna get into it um, later on, but here's just a few, a few like key things here that, that's terrible about this process. Uh, one, we, we found that the strategy often changed the project scope. So as we, we came up with new ideas and we were challenging things as we, we got to know and got into the project, that then that changed things and then we're trying to work around budgets and timing to make things fit into, uh, into it. Um, We'd spend weeks in a project. Okay, so client signs, ready to go, project starts. And we spend weeks in the planning, creating wireframes, doing all these things. Okay, so here's the client, and they're like, okay, the first meeting is three weeks from when we, we start the kickoff. And I, I hired these, these creative guys. It's going to, you know, this is going to be great. And we walk in, and we have a 42-page wireframe document. Now that isn't exciting, right? No, right? You're like, what? What? This is what I'm paying for. Um, so th there's some disconnect there. The, the planning portion of the process and the creative portion of the process became two separate things. So the decisions made in the planning didn't really affect what was going on in the creative. Uh, revisions, once we got to the creative, were just, were just in this constant you know, churn of revisions. Um, the clients oftentimes micromanaged us at that point because it was the only part of the process at that point, you know, a month into the, into the project that they felt like they had some control. Um, the assembly line workflow that you saw earlier really cut out collaboration. There were decisions that were being made in one stage that didn't get translated to the next. And um, I think to the, uh, I think a lot of ears would like to hear this, is that the developers got screwed in the end because the, yeah, <laughs> there we go. Uh, because the, t the timing would, would, would slip, 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 and who gets, who's, who's the last person or the last group to, to finish the project is the developer. So um, they would often be you know, grumpy and not very happy with us. Um, and the worst part of all of this is that we, we failed to gain um, the client's confidence. Um, oftentimes we had this sneaky suspicion that, that they thought, 
you know, if I only had the time and, and, the, and the right team members, we could just do this internally, and it, we, we'd do a better job. And so that left us in a spot at the end of a project where we, um, we were just down about it. We, we just wanted to get it done. It was like, okay, let's just get this project done, and, you know, we'll move on to the next one, and we'll get excited about the next one, but then, you know, this process would just lead us to the same thing. Um, and so that just left us feeling with this, this bit of remorse, like, man, if only we did these things, or only, what, what if this decision had been made? We could have done it so much better. We just felt like we were never achieving our best work. So it was frustrating, like... Like a Furby? Like a Furby, yeah. The best Furby is the, the Furby that has no batteries in it, and its eyes are, like, lifeless and still can peer through your soul. <sighs> okay, so... Based on all that, we decided to change, and this didn't happen in a day. Um, we, we examined what we were doing. We started experimenting. Sometimes it didn't work, sometimes it did. Uh, we re refined and refined. We basically applied the design process to ourselves and to our own process. Uh, keep trying something new, see how that works, evaluate it, and then, and then try something else. And we started reading a lot and trying to figure out how other people were doing it and what, what was new. What were people doing in order to, to make things happen more efficiently? Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're going to go through um, our new process and we're going to go through chunk by chunk. This first chunk is going to be the planning, um, the planning part of it. So this is everything that, that defines, defines the project. And so just as a, a way to illustrate where we're at now. That looks much more simple. Yeah. Oh, yeah. This is, <laughs> this is way easier. Uh, instead of that, you know, that, that linear um, process that we had before, uh, there's a lot more division here. And this is a lot more like, you know, the guy that, that spins the plates on different sticks. And I don't know why he does that, but he, he does it. And, you know, they're all going at the same time. Um, the, the important thing to notice here is that after the planning chunk, which is what we're going to talk about here um, now, the strategy SOW and prototype, you can see that all of a sudden everybody's working after this. Instead of waiting for the next person to finish, we have the writers are doing what they do, the designers are doing what they do, the development people do what they do, and everybody's simultaneously getting it done. Um, and I, I mentioned this at the beginning, and I think it's, it's worth reiterating, is this is, not, this is not even our process for every project. This is just an illustration of what we want to talk about today. We do these things differently with every project because every project has different timing. Every project has different uh, expectations. You don't know if you've worked with a client before, this might change a little bit. If you worked with a client for 10 years, then this process wouldn't apply to that. So we just wanted to, we wanted to put this all up there so that we could talk about each of these things and um, just, just help you know, get that conversation going. Okay, so now we start with strategy. Uh, seems very obvious, but so did our last process, and that process stinks. So, so, so bear with me. Uh, so with the strategy for us, um, it basically means that we pull more team members into the beginning to meet with the client and get to understand them. Um, it's not just the account team, it's, it's designers or developers or really all of us, writers. Uh, and we start solving their problems before we create a statement of work and understanding what a budget is and, and, and what we're recommending them for them to do. So understanding not just what their ask is, like we need a new site, but what are their problems? Like what, what kind of problems are they having internally that we can help them solve from that point of view? Or um, is, is the problem actually their brand itself rather than a new site itself? It's, it's, it's a, it goes a lot deeper than that. So we, we put all that together and strategy then includes and, and ends up as our statement of work or our contract that's gonna say what we're gonna do, how we're gonna do it, how much it should cost, how long it should take. Um, and in that way, everybody's already somewhat invested in the project. We've already had everyone look at it, everybody's on the same page, everybody knows pretty much what's on the horizon, what's coming. So there's no big surprise. Yeah, um, if you're here for Sarah Morgan's um, talk yesterday, she was, she mentioned uh, Aaron Walter in, in his book about uh, designing for emotion and design personas. This is, this is where the design persona information would come from. If, if that was something that you sparked to and wanted to bring into it, that, that's where this, this information is, is pulling into there. So here's where we were, wireframes. This was a big part of um, our process you know, a, a while back. 
And uh, what we found out, painfully so, is that clients never really understood what, what these documents were. You know, they, they were meant to, to lay out an entire site or an entire application page by page, detailed annotations. Man, these things were complicated. And the more work we put into it to explain what each page was and each component and each interaction, the more like the glaze, the veil would go over the client's eyes and they would kind of bobble their head. And these meetings just seemed to last for like ages. It was, it was like that morning I'd wake up and be like, man, I wish I was sick. I don't want to go and do this, but I have to do this because this is going to be terrible. Um, and just updating and maintaining this document was, was awful. It was time consuming. Um, now, I'm not saying that we, 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 we still use wireframes, but we use them differently than, than, than we did in the past. It's more of an exception than it is the rule now. Um, we use them internally. Oftentimes, we, we sketch uh, in wireframes. Uh, we have windows around our office and dry erase markers everywhere, and we get up and we internal meetings and collaboration sessions, and we, we do wireframes on, on the windows. Um, it looks like a beautiful mind. That seems and that's, that's one of the strong things about wireframes for an internal process is that anybody can draw them. So I can draw wireframes up there and, and get across a, a nice concept that I think could yeah. work to, to Rob or anything yes. else. And every time I draw a, a person in the wireframe, Kevin says, oh, yeah, we got aliens in this one, huh? Yeah, that's really good. It's always a, like, a good reason to critique my drawing skills. They look um, like aliens. The, the other time we use wireframes is um, sometimes we, we get hired to, to do just the design work, and that we know that there will be um, a development team that's not our team doing the work. And so sometimes we'll create uh, wireframes just as documentation for, for that team to build. So it's more, more of a reference than anything. OK, so uh, wireframes were terrible. And we hated it. We hated life. Um, so we said, can we come up with something? Surely we can come up with something that is easier and quicker and way better than, than wireframes. So we came up with this idea of page inventories. Um, I'll, I'll take the blame for this one, actually. <laughs> this is going to be a bad idea, just so you know. That's your spoiler. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you can't always have a good one. Um, so we said, OK, if we can just get something that's quicker, if, if clients aren't even looking at the wireframe documents, let's just create something a lot, uh, that's a lot easier to make so that we can get to the creative stuff faster, right? Because that, that's, that's, that's what they want to see. They want to see pictures. Um, and so what, what basically page inventories were, well, we we take like page by page. What's what's the priority of this page? And, and we'd pull this from the strategy and say, oh yeah, we want to set up this benefit and we want to do this and this is all about sign up. And then we'd say, okay, what what are the things on the page that need to do that? And we'd make that all work together. The problem was that it was even more abstract and therefore less helpful. You know, the client would say, oh yeah, this is all stuff that I had in my original brief. Oh yeah, this makes sense. Yeah yeah yeah. But then when you see it in layout, they're like, whoa, 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 this isn't this isn't what I agreed to. I'm like, well, yeah, here's here's what. And it, it, once again, they, they just weren't making that connection. All right, prototypes. Yes, prototypes. Yeah, they're good. Yeah, these these are basically <laughs> wireframes, but they're way better than wireframes. This is what we're doing now. So about um, I think about a year and a half ago, we started using uh, Twitter Bootstrap. Um, actually, in last year's presentation, uh, we talked a bit about that. And so now we're creating wireframes in browser. And the reason why this is so much better than doing it in InDesign or, you know, whatever, pages, that um, we're actually doing this, and it's, it's something that doesn't get tossed into a filing cabinet, right? Like, if, if this is a Rails app, then Rail, like Rails is set up on my machine. Like the, the developers come over, they get Terminal out, they set it up for me, GitHub's hooked up, and I start writing HTML and making clickable HTML, like these wireframe, these are demos. They actually work. You can actually click on things and links and buttons, and they work. And the developers, when, they, when they're ready to begin, have that groundwork laid. They're, of course, they're not going to use my code Exactly, but that's okay. There's, there's some of it that's there that they can get started with. And so it, it, it's, helping, it's helping things move around. As a designer, I'm, instead of squishing like, all these blocks onto 
uh, onto a page that's defined, I'm now fitting them on an actual browser page. So I can scroll, I can create interactivity, and it's super fast because when I make a change one place, it applies to everything. And as a writer, Kevin loves it because uh, I can actually see where the copy is going to live and how it's going to interact, interact with, the, with all the other parts of the site. So it's not just writing in some like black box away from, from this living, breathing site, but you're, you're seeing what's going to happen. You're seeing the size of buttons, which is like huge for clients. Like they never, every client I think thinks that a button is at least two sentences long. So being able to see how it works and then show the client and describe how it's going to work through this, it, it's, it's an amazing tool, amazing. And a client can't make this. That's right. a big deal. Like yeah. you're showing them something they could never do. Yeah, and it's done so quickly that in that first presentation, you're like, here's, here's a link. And it's like, wow, this is like, you just built me a website in a week. This is like my site. Like I can see it. There's enough connection. It's real enough that they get it. And it, it doesn't take, like, there's no, like, oh, okay, if I click on this, I click it. No, if you click on this on page 13, then it would take you to page 42, right? No. It's, it's actually there, and it's live, and it's real. So here are just, I'm just going to flip through, like, maybe five screenshots of, which might be a little bit difficult to see, of one of our prototypes. So we have an index list. So obviously, there's limitations to a prototype. There's no server-side language or anything. All we're doing is, is just basically making a, a static site. And so there's, there's actual edges, you know, edges to, to the thing. So we create an index that, that outlines every single page that we create and every single um, state and that type of thing. And then here's just, here's just a few. Once again, there's still gray boxes, but there are links, there's buttons, there's navigation. You get a sense as to um, how to interact with things. So you can see we can have status messages, those types of things. You can get a sense of, of how the interactivity would play out. And it's real simple. Okay, so now that, that prototype becomes like our central resource for everyone. It is the tool that we can use to talk to clients, the tool that we can use to talk internally. Um, it's the way that developers can begin writing their requirements. And it's how, uh, as, a, as a writer, I can start asking the client for the content that's going to live on each specific page. And they can have a sense of what, what I'm asking for because they can actually see it. Um, and it's, it's basically the stepping stone that's going to launch us into the actual creative process and get us going, where everyone on our team is on the same page and, and our clients are on the same page too. Now we're all, we're all becoming like one team moving forward. Mm -hmm. Yeah, even it gives the opportunity to the clients to see what, where, where things are going to be and they can start pulling content. That's a huge deal, right? Like how many times have you been at the end of the project and the clients, oh, do you have any of your images? Oh, yeah, this person in, in marketing, and I'll have to talk to this person, and then we'll have to get a SideQuest disk and you know, get it over to you. Yeah, so it helps. OK, so Tone. Um, so this is, the next, this is the next step. So uh, giant pink slide is like next section. So we did planning. Now we're moving on to the, the creative yes. step. So, um, we're seeking tone. We, we want to give them a great idea. Uh, and now that we have these prototypes, it should, should be easy. But we still had another stumbling block that came up on, on us. Uh, and that was, we're like, oh, you know what, should be, what would be great? Now that we know how this is going to work, what we should show them are full blown out sites. Like, this is a home page. Here's three versions of a home page with full copy, full site. This is exactly what it's going to look like. And you guys are going to love it. OK. So that should have worked, but it didn't. <laughs> The reason being, we, were, we weren't really thinking from a client perspective what they were looking at. And that, that being, they were giving us, they couldn't even give us feedback on what we needed because they were too focused on what we were showing them. So whether that was the imagery that we were picking, or that was the, the language that we were putting in there, or just the general design, there wasn't, there was already, we weren't far enough along to be showing that kind of stuff. So the stuff, the, the feedback we were getting was completely off and, and really unhelpful for, for the most part. Right. Yes. We love it. Uh, we don't know, but it's not right. right. I don't know why, but yeah. Mm. That's, good. That's good feedback. 
Yeah, all right, cool, let's move on. Okay, so uh, this is where we uh, take another uh, pause and, and just say, um, you know, for me, and, and I'm sure a lot of you are like this, like seeing is believing, right? So we could talk in abstracts all day long, but uh, it's only gonna be real, really helpful for you if we show you some work. And uh, the, the work we're gonna show you is from uh, three of our clients, and uh, we're not gonna walk you through you know, the, the start of a project to the end of the project and, and look, how, look how brilliant you know, the end product is. We're not, that's not what we're doing here. We, we're just gonna show, we're gonna, we're gonna hop around a little bit to show some variety of different projects and show you a lot of the internal, behind the scenes process stuff that, that went into that end product. So uh, the first client is Idea Traction. If you were here yesterday to hear Todd Henry speak, um, this is a project that we're working on with him. Um, and it's a product for, for helping teams organize, archive, and rate ideas. So it goes hand in hand with, with what his presentation was yesterday. So that's idea traction. Uh, the next is another of our clients, um, EBTH, or Everything But The House. It's an online estate sale website that we um, built from the ground up. We scrapped everything they had and we started over and it was pretty intense, um, but pretty great. And finally, just to really th th throw it into the mix, is, is Wild Sumatra Adventures, which is an eco-tourism business in Indonesia. So this has is, this is been more of a branding and uh, marketing website. OK, so now in our tone exploration, um, this is where I start working at the same time as, as Rob. And, and sometimes we work on these together, and sometimes uh, I kind of go into my own little little world and start writing these things. But I don't know if anybody's ever worked with Procter & Gamble before. They had this idea of this, the big idea. They always wanted you to come up with the big idea. And usually this came across as like a whole plan for everything. That's kind of where this thing came from. But it went from being a big idea. And it's more, uh, when Sarah Morgan was talking, the idea of like find your voice yesterday, that's kind of what this is. This is us listening to all that planning and all of those documents that we created for the client. And now we're going to create this tone and, and, and it's not going to be, there's not one solution. I'm going to give you four options of what I hear you saying and how I translate and how that could be in the site. And the goal of this is to just really get the clients excited and get them to understand it and get them to like, yes, that is us. That is who we are. Or that is not us at all. Please don't write that again. <laughs> and it's like, okay, this is good feedback. I appreciate that. So this is what we did for Wild Sumatra. I won't read them all, but uh, the idea is it's just two or three sentences and then uh, one, one like, kind of like punch at the end that would either live as a headline or something like that. So for this one, come and be humbled or welcome to Sumatra. Let the journey begin. So they're in the same vein, but they're not, it's not the same thing in any way. And it would lead to much different visuals and much different copy. Um, and then we have two more in there. Sumatra waits, plan your escape or choose your own adventure. So, so they're all in the same vein, but all, all slightly different. And, and it's, it's, we get a lot of good reviews from this from the clients. Like we've seen them just like sit back and close their eyes and just like really take this in and get done. And like there's some bonding there that goes across with you and the client and the team. They're like, man, you guys get us. That's right. This is who we are. And what we're doing now is we're starting to paint the picture of we're giving the clients and our team an evaluation tool of all copy for the rest of the project and the site itself. The, the site and the copy should feel like this. And now everybody is on the same page as to what that should be. Yeah, and since it's just copy, the client doesn't feel, feel like, oh, if I change this, it'll screw up this piece that I really like in this mock-up, right? It's just copy. And it, if you want a Frankenstein, like you know every client wants to, I like this piece, oh, I like this sentence, this word's great. Do it here. You know, don't do it in the mock-up. Man, that's, that's, that, that's where it, it just, you know, you know you've made decisions um, and you've, you've changed things to, to all fit together. And when you start Frankensteining that late in the game, it's just everything just looks, looks disjointed. So let me talk about the design version of the copy tone. And um, we've started using style tiles about a year ago. Um, we discovered this. It, it was um, this site, Style Tiles, here you can, you can find, uh, check out for yourself. Um, it's by Samantha Warren. Um, and it's, it's really the copy tone version for the designer. And all we're trying to do with the style tile 
is capture the essence of a concept. We're trying to nail the visual language. That's it. Because we know in every design there's common elements, right? We know that we have typography. We know that there's color. There's imagery. There's textures. There's effects. How do all those things play together with one another? And can we do something? Can we create something that's just so much quicker and easier to create? Create a much wider variety of the things of those things, and then compare apples to apples and see what's what's clicking with the client. So once again, we're focusing on look and feel. So we're going to show you a couple examples of uh, style tell. Um, this is for EBTH, and so we created this this style tile, and um, you know you can see that that there's you know how the logo and the title work together. There's color. There's a little bit of UI exploration because you know in the prototype we figured out oh there's going to be this type of navigation there's going to be categories for this we know that there's going to be um, obviously there's going to be headers and how text is treated we knew that there would be thumbnails of of products and that there would be prices and how many days were left that you could bid on this and so then we also you know include some some words that then tie that copy to them back in so well, how does this how does this uh, this style tile Feel, you know, is it warm? It's it's detailed. It's reputable. So here's here's one style tile, and here's another. So same client, different, a whole different look, right? So this one, um, obviously, it's a little little tough to see, but there's a lot more ornamentation in here. That there's a little bit more texture to 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 the to the whole design, right? The the the, the colors are a little bit more punchy. The type is way different. This feels more eclectic, more like a garage sale or, or something like that. Then we go to this one, and it's a lot cleaner, and it's a lot more upscale, and it feels a little bit more like an estate sale and less like a flea market. This one feels a, a, a little bit different than that. You know, there's there's more like tone on tone, earth tones. It, it feels hip, but um, not not too hip. The, the, you know, you could see that in this thumbnail version here where the, the prices and the bidding and all this stuff changes, the priority changes. Here's another one. We went all the way cool. Let's put some textures in the header. Let's try a really, really tall type. Let's, let's go for like a more of a, a typewriter font to, to make it feel um, even different in, in, in something a little bit more special. Even darker more sophisticated, more rich colors. You can see that all for the same client, but totally different feels. How do you do this in a mock-up when you have to balance buttons, navigation, all sorts of things, copy, imagery? How do you do that in a timely fashion where here, you're just, you're just you're, you're letting it rip. This is like one of my favorite parts of, our, of, of what I do. Creating these is so much fun. Uh, I hope, I hope you, get, you get the chance to to try these, it's, it's awesome. Okay, so this is, here's another set of style tiles that we did for idea traction. Once again, this is the, 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 the app that's, that's gonna help you um, organize and, and rate ideas. So this is more application focused. So you can tell we've, we've shifted things around a little bit here. Color, type, some of the character, UI exploration. So we, we chose some of those things that we knew we're going to be crucial to hit. But we're only going to show you a little snippet of it. So it gives you a really good sense of what your app's going to look like, but not have to design the whole thing. So you can see there's some rating. Uh, there's like the rating system here, how some of the imagery's treated, the button styles, some badges, that type of thing. Here's the next one. Totally different. So we went from all the, the, the flat stuff to something that's more textured, has more effects on it, more shading, more depth, more dimension, to a whole different style tile. Super light, gray, white, teal. Totally different feel. And then this one, once again, you know, it, what, what when a client sees this, they can say, yeah, that's us. That, you got it. That, that part's us. This, this isn't us. Like, that, that is not, like, that's, it's too bright. It's too colorful. This, this uh, you know, we, we have executives at, 
you know, Fortune 500 companies that would never use something like this. It's too much. It's too in their face. It's too youthful. You know, and as a non-designer, it is easier to make comments on this kind of stuff. Like all of a sudden you're looking through and everything's sectioned off. And as I scroll through and I'm looking at the UI exploration and I see that, okay, now the numbers are huge. Now the addition's huge. Now that it looks more like important to add an idea as opposed to how many ideas are on there. It gives me the power to start making some really valid comments within this, within this process and helping out the team in that way. Okay, so one thing to keep in mind here. For idea traction, you might be saying, okay, th these, these look like totally different from one another. Well, yes, they do. Because this client said, we have no standards. This is a, this is a new product. No one's ever seen it before. We want you to go ahead and just let it rip. And so we went ahead and let it rip. And you know, I know lots of you are probably like, well, we have clients that have you know, these binders of brand standards and all this stuff that we have to follow. Um, and, it, and it's true. You, you wouldn't necessarily need this step in the process um, if, you ha if you were in that situation. So once again, we're just, we're just showing you an example. This isn't every project we do this for. But for the ones we do, this, this, this is an example of what it looks like. OK. So now, now it's time to just roll up our sleeves and get the work done. Right? We've done the planning. We've created the prototype. We've, we've created the tone. We know what it's supposed to look like and feel. Now it's actually time to write, design, and continue with development and get it done. So that starts. Well, we'll start. It doesn't start. This is going congruently, but with the copy deck. So as I said before, this is the most important part of the process. Uh, the old way versus the new way. Does everybody use Google Docs in here? Is it everybody? So in my opinion, it's the greatest invention of all time. This, Google Docs has changed my life. And, and the reason is, the way that we used to create copy decks and share them with clients, whew, you would have to create these tables. And it would be, all right, now here's the title, and then here's... The, Here's the next one, and here's version two. And when I save it out as a Word document, because none of you work on a Mac, I'm now going to send it to you, and it's going to jack up all my tables, and everything's going to be a mess, and nothing's going to link, and I'm going to try to put a table of contents at the top, and that's not going to work. And it's, it, was the, it was just terrible. And then I would get comments from everybody, and it would be in a different version, version two, version 2.3. Awful. Then came Google Docs. Now, Google Docs, as I can, sh I can create this whole deck, format it, and share it with everybody on the team. So first of all, I have to be comfortable with the fact that everybody can now see my working document and, and understand that I'm gonna be making mistakes or I wrote something terrible and they're gonna comment on it. But it's all gonna exist on one document. So every comment I get exists in one document. I don't have to keep saving things out and sending and sharing. From a designer's perspective, Rob can reach in here and pull copy out at any time and, and put it into his designs and work with it. So now there's no, he, he understands immediately if something is not jiving right or if it's written too long. At the same time, since I, we've done these prototypes and since the development's already started and we, since we've used our CMS over and over again, I, I am now starting to create this copy deck in a way that makes sense for the development team. And I'm starting to write these things, the, the deck itself, and break it down the way our CMS is broken down. And I, and I start to spot problems ahead of time. Like, I can go up to, to one of our developers and be like, hey, when we did this wild Sumatra thing, it turns out that they're rating this level of difficulty one to seven every time consistently. We need to have a box that you check and then a rating system that you can put in there and do that. So it's just being able to spot that kind of stuff and help your team members out in the future right now and not just hand them the deck like, all right, here you go, next step, go. The other thing you can do is share it with your client and give your client access to this document and get all the client feedback in here at the same time, share it with them, and it's, it's, it's awesome. I love yeah. it. I can't say enough about it. It's great. Okay, so uh, once again, we have the prototypes finish, the, um, you know, the, the tone set. Now we go into what's called design themes, um, the design team does. So at this point, we are just marrying up the prototype, the planning that was done there, and then the style tile, so we know the visual language, what, whatever style tile is approved, and then we mock up two or three um, versions of a single page, it, a single page from the prototype. We tend to pick one that's really complicated or one that we know is going to have 
you know, common functionality or common UI elements so that when we're designing the other pages, we can then, we know that that's approved and we can borrow those things um, into uh, the page templates. The, the great part about this is when, you know, like when Kevin was talking about our old process was that we would come in with the full, you know, the full home page done, everything finished, an interior page, all that. Here, we're, we're working in very gradually with the client. We're talking about copy tone. We're talking about visual language. We're focusing them on those types of decisions and not, not overwhelming them with the big picture and, and what every image and what every caption and what every, every single decision is made. So we're, we're gradually bringing them into the process and we're making them part of the process. And they're much more comfortable with making those decisions step by step than all at once. Here's some design themes for you. So um, back to idea traction. So here's the, uh, the, the, the style tile that they approved. This is the one they chose. So now we're going to apply that to a single page of the prototype. So here is design theme one. So let's go back. Here's the style tile, and here's how it's applied. So in this one, this is where we start making decisions about where does the navigation go? How are things prioritized? The, the, the traction score, the, the, the score of this idea, is it, is it really big and colorful in the thing that, that, that draws your attention in? Do, are the idea chunks, so here's the idea and then here's comments about that idea, are they separated? Are, are, they, are there hard divisions of that? How does the, the overall challenge set up and people involved? And the, these, this is when we really start making these decisions. It's so much easier because the design language is done. You know, the, the, the work, the, that work is finished and we can just focus on, on this, this portion of it. Here's another version. So it's taking that same, that same style tile and now we're going full width uh, of, of the page. And we're, we're toning everything down. We're making that, that challenge be the anchor to the page and everything falling underneath. We're taking any associated imagery and we're downplaying that. And we're really making this more about the type and how easy it is to float on the page. Now this we're somewhere somewhere in between uh, the last two the last two ideas, and everything seems like it fits together so well, and it's all pieced together, and, and it's really tight. And then here's another here's another uh, design theme. This one just this one just went for it and, and tried something totally different. And, Instead of having rows of ideas, this one is meant to simulate the brainstorming sessions where things just pop in. And so they're not, it's not this linear thing, but things are mixed up and it's more like a masonry type of layout. And the, the, the actual images and videos that are attached with ideas, those are the things that are going to be larger and um, more, more uh, attention grabbing. So we'll make those things the big thing. So we're, just, we're pulling the levers here. We're pushing and pulling. We're saying, what, what's right for this client? And the, and the client knows, right? The client knows who his audiences are. These are the people that I've, I talked to. These are, the, these, these are the people that are using my, my site or my app. Like, they're going like, to like this. They're going to love this. But they're, they're not, not so crazy about this one or that one. And so once again, we're trying to focus in on getting the right feedback at the right time. This is what the, the, the final outcome was of that. So taking a few elements here and there and um, you know, what was liked in, in this one and that one and pulling it all together. And then this was our, our final design theme. So we continue our work. We then take the design theme, which is basically the style tile it's just moved along a little further. And now we take that to the prototype. We identify you know, some of those key pages. We're not going to design. You know, we're not going to make page types. Is an, another way of saying page types is like templates, right? the templates that you create. We're not going to do one for every single page of the site. That's ridiculous. We're just going to do the ones that, that, that um, have common elements, common UI elements, that are going to give the development team enough to go on to do the markup and make it happen. Um, I think it's important to talk, to, to just take a break for a second and just mention Photoshop first, first browser at this point, because this is a topic that um, I know I've had with, with, with some folks. And um, for us right now, 
when we get to this point, so everything as far as the, the style tiles and design themes has, has been done in Photoshop. And the prototype in browser. So depending on what our resources looks like, our, you know, our, our staff's availability, we might go right into browser at this point. Um, the pros of that is that it's you're combining steps. You know, it's a little faster. Um, you're reviewing things that are the way they're going to represent at the end, end of the project anyway. So it's, it's more like seeing the real thing. The, the, the cons of in-browser is that the designer has to give up control. Maybe that's not a con. Maybe that's a good thing. Um, no, it's probably not. Um, it involves more people, which means that there's now more people involved. So there's, you, know, you have to make sure you're scheduling time and reviewing, and, and there's a little bit more of that work. As far as doing it in Photoshop, the designers are super comfortable with just hammering this out. Um, they know what they're doing. They get it done. But the problem is that the UX team a lot of times has, or whoever's doing the, um, sorry, whoever's doing the, uh, the front end development has to wait for at least that first round to get approved before they can, they can get going. And then there's the whole, you know, sob story about the Photoshop files and their organization and, you know, file management and the layers aren't named right and there's copy and uh, yeah. so um, that whole thing is, is a mess. It can be messy depending on who the designer is and how um, crazy is about labeling. So let me um, just rip through some of these um, page types. So this one is for idea traction. So you've seen, the, you've seen some of the work for the style tiles, the design theme. And now I'm just going to flip through some of these pages and just to show you how, um, how the page templates panned out. So you can, you can see how the, the consistency and color type button styles um, layout. This is a page that you've seen. We've, this is the point where we started adding real copy. So we can see how copy, like real copy would actually lay out in here. It's always fun to add fake copy when you, when you can. Yeah. Um, so th these, are, these are the page templates that we created for this project. So what does a table look like? And what does this layout look like? And um, you know, what, what are some of the, the, the account pages looking like? Modal windows. And then for this project, we, we, we finished out by creating a style guide. So here's, here's what type looks like. Here's some of the headers, colors, um, button styles, interactions, links, alerts, notifications, that type of thing. So we were able to hand this off to their team, and they're able to build it for the most part. Um, this, this is another example. This is for EBTH, the, the online estate sale um, site. So this was the approved style tile. And then here's a couple page types, the home page. A product category page and a product detail page. So you can see how just the decisions made from a visual standpoint in the style tiles makes this so much easier to, to happen. OK, senior developers. Then it goes on to the development team. The, I guess the biggest point about this slide is that it, it, this is not a handoff stage here. They've been working on the development for, for quite some time. And they, they've been involved in the project. Um, when we share designs, when we have meetings, when we share copy, we're, we're sharing them with developers as well as, well as the creative side uh, of, of everything. And everybody's, everybody's become this, this one team. We've been talking about all this stuff. So there's, there shouldn't be any surprises. So th of course, they couldn't finish everything. I mean, they're waiting for, for Rob to finish the designs of, of the pa specific page types. But you know, this is where they, they've actually been coding and testing. And now they can apply the styles and they can apply um, the different page types so that we can start getting into the CMS and building it out. Yeah, once again, all the, all the planning that went in, in at the beginning, they've been writing business requirements, creating stories, writing and testing code. And you know, as, as we have meetings and figure more stuff out, they're involved, and we just continue to, to collaborate and build on top of each other. Then... Shots. Shots. We're finished. Yes. So the reason being, 
Why do we mention our shots? It's because we understood one of our biggest takeaways from leaving where we were was that nobody celebrates anything when they're finished, especially when it comes to websites. And the, the reason is there is no hard finish to a website. It's like this slow, gradual process, and it's a soft launch, then a hard launch, and then, you know, it just, it's a never ending thing. Plus, when it launches, when the developers actually hit go, I'm already working on two other projects, you know, and I'm, and I'm well down the road of creating the tone for the next, next big thing. So we, we made a decision. We are going to make celebration a part of our process. And the way that we do it, you can do it any way you want. You can eat donuts. At Ample, we do shots of bourbon. It doesn't matter if it's 10 o'clock in the morning or 5 o'clock at night. We're doing a shot of bourbon when we hit go. And that can be a landing page. That can be a huge site. It's a shot of bourbon. Yeah. Isn't that yeah. awesome, Rob? Don't you love? Oh, man. I love and hate this tradition. Um, <laughs> one, one thing I love about it is that, or you know, several things I love about it, is that it makes everyone in our office, we have like a big, you know, it's like a, a big room basically with, with breakout rooms, but the working space is one large room with a, a kitchen, kitchen bar, is that everyone stops what they're doing, gets up, gets around the bar, we, we pour out this, this terrible liquid into shot glasses. <laughs> and we all, you know, we, we all take the shot. And um, some of us, like, our spines turn uh, into jello, and, and, and we make horrible faces, and the other ones laugh at us, and um, that's okay. Some of us, it just makes us happy. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and we, we take the time to, to recognize what we've done as a team. Because this isn't just... Kevin and I creating this, this is, this is a lot of times projects are our entire staff has been working on this for months. Like take the time to recognize that. And it, it could be five minutes or it could be, this could then go on, this could lead to bigger things like beers and, and that type of thing and that's great. It's like just take the time to recognize what you've done. It, it, it's, it goes a long way, it really does. Yeah, it's a gateway shot. Yes. <laughs> So what? Right? Like that, that's when I come to conferences, this is the question when I when I listen to speakers, the, the whole time I'm asking myself, so what? Why does it matter? Um, how is this gonna change anything that I do? And um, I would say that process is what dictates what you do on a daily, monthly, yearly basis. If you have a terrible process in place and you, get, you know you get frustrated when these things happen, chances are that that process is letting you down. It's holding you back from, from really being able to deliver the best work you, you can. And it drives me nuts. Like if you, uh, if you heard Todd speak yesterday, you know, he, he was right in saying that we're all creatives, right? Like it doesn't matter if you're a developer, it doesn't matter if you're a writer or a designer or project manager. We're creating, like we're basically creators in that we're solving people's problems. We're constantly solving people's problems. So why not take some of that problem solving and apply it to our own process, right? This is an insanity that we don't do this. Let's fix the things that are wrong with our own process so that we can do better work in the end. And you know, when Kevin and I came into this, we're like, you know, let's talk about our, just our experience Hopefully, it's, there's something there to learn from, but let's, let's at least put forth some, some practical things that we can, we can take from this. Yeah, and that, that's kind of like the idea here. We know everybody's not in our situation. You know, Rob, Rob and I are co-founders of, of a company, so if we didn't like the process, we'd be like, all right, this process stinks. Let's start a new process. Let's figure this out. And not everybody has that ability. Some people can't do that. But we, we do believe there's things that you can do now that, that can help you, whether that's looking down the assembly line and getting to know someone, whether that's learning new things, there's something that you can do interpersonally that can, that can lead to a change in your process. Yeah, and overall happiness and, and, and that. So one of the first things is to identify the rough spots in your process. So what, where, are you, where do you see struggles happening and how can you adjust? For example, we still have holes in our process that we see, right? And the, the first one is um, self-promotion. Uh, that wasn't mentioned in our process at all. We do it. We try to do it. Um, that whole PR aspect and, and where is that? 
and we're just, we're just trying to work that out. Like, where do you find the time to post to Twitter, Facebook, write a blog post, write a news post, and write a work page that recaps all the work that you did while you're doing the next batch of work? So how do, how do you do that, and how do you work that in your process? That's something that we're working out. Yeah. Um, and, and once again, we're, you know, we, we want to have the conversation, so it only makes sense that we're, we're showing you know, some transparency as to, to our own problems here. Um, an, another one is um, project owners. And when I say project owners, um, I don't mean project manager. Uh, we have a project manager. She's tremendous, awesome, wonderful. She's here, so I can... Stand up, man. <laughs> <laughs> what, what I'm talking about in project owners is that um, you're, you're going to be working more closely with a client if, depending on what part of the project you're in. So if you're in the upfront part and we're doing copy tone, it only makes sense that, that Kevin and I are in all those meetings that we're hearing those decisions. And not, we're going to try to take notes and capture as much as we can, but there, there's, there's conversations that are happening that, that, that someone in the development stage might not get. And we might not tell them because we didn't remember until the end. Um, so, so when I say project owners, is who's responsible for that stuff and overseeing and making sure the quality control's there the whole time through. So we're, we're working through that, that as well. The other thing is development reviews. Um, when's, when's the right time to review you know, the development work? When's it too early? When's it too late? And this has been, I would say, of anything, um, more of just feel, feeling it out. Because um, I think you would, I think most developers would agree that they prefer head head down time, like they just they, like give me time to work on this. I don't want you over my shoulder. Um, I just want I just want to hammer through this. I want to put on some death metal, and I'm just gonna rock this out, you know, for 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 three straight days or whatever that is. It's just making sure that when we're we're reviewing something. You know, the first review of, of, of something that's in development that we're not saying, oh, you know what? I think this is off like two pixels. Oh, oh, yep, 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 yep. Sure enough, this, this padding over here is seven pixels, but this padding over here is 12. Got gotcha you there. You know, that stuff <laughs> drives people crazy because it's not the appropriate time to have those conversations, right? You have to know when it's appropriate, and, and we have to, you know, we have to figure out when those you know, when those reviews are scheduled and when's the, r the right time to say the right things. Okay, next thing, learn new things. So, we've been trying to do this a lot at Ample. We've had people, uh, there's been uh, people t learning code, there's been people learning how to write better, as, as Rob, Rob is doing right now. He's reading a book on writing, mm -hmm. which is exciting for me. Uh, yeah, when I told him, I'm like, you know what, I need to write better. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go out and I'm gonna look for some books on that, and then I found this book. And I had that book on my desk. Yeah, like he's, like, he's like, what, this book? I'm like, oh man. <laughs> and then there was a point where I'm, I was talking, I'm like, man, I, I'm re reviewing this document and we're in Google Docs, and, and he's like, and I'm like, oh, I wish I would've read that book, because now this, all this stuff drives me crazy. And he's like, hey, let's edit this together. What would you change about it? How would you deconstruct this sentence? Yeah, and he was so pumped because I took an interest in his craft. Yeah. And, and, and it's been the same way, like, um, yes, I'm a writer, but I'm also drawing on those windows and trying to f solve some design problems. Um, I have attempted to write code, and I am terrible at it. I understand. But I can stylize my own text, and I can make it look better in our CMS. And I, and I know the basics of how, how the code is going to work and what I can and cannot do. And that's allowing me to make decisions that's going to make the developer's life easier in the future. Right. And when you make a developer's life easier in the future, they don't mind when you come up and ask them questions later or give them some feedback later. Yeah. And, Your and, team. And really, that's why we're here, right? Like, that's the whole point of this conference is to share knowledge with one another so that we can grow an appreciation for each other's craft. Now, I'm going to say one thing that's going to be really popular in this room, and I'm going to say one thing that's going to be unpopular in this room. The first thing is that designers, writers, learn some development. It's going to help so much. It's going to help so much. Every time that I've been anywhere and I come to a developer, and this is just, this, I'm, I do some development work, not much, but when I come to a developer and say, hey, I'm trying to figure out how to do this, this, and this, they're like, yes, let's do this, man. They, they, they are so excited. They get so jacked up. Like, it's so cool that you're you want to learn this. You want to you understand what it is we're trying to do. Now, 
it shouldn't stop there. Developers, we know you're not designers. It's okay. Take some interest in design. It, it has to go both ways, you know? You can't have it all. I know you guys are awesome, you build stuff, it's great, but talk to the designers. See what blogs they're reading. See what books they might recommend. Or, or you know, go see uh, Helvetica, you know, uh, airing of, you know, this documentary about a typeface for an hour and a half, and then they make fun of them. That's cool, you know? Like, we want to share in each other's craft so that we have an appreciation for it. So when someone has a temper tantrum, you know, in, in a meeting, you're like, oh, okay, I, I think I understand what's going on here. And at least there's some, there's some appreciation for what we're doing. It really helps, it helps so much in, in just respecting one another and, and, and really honoring each other. More collaboration. So less meetings, more collaboration. Don't wait for reviews um, to show stuff to people. I think this is something that, that is, this is difficult at times. You know, a lot of times, if, if, you, if you go back to um, art class in high school, you know, there would be people who would, who would be drawing or whatever their project was, and, you know, someone would walk behind them, and it's like, do you have the mentality to, like, oh, mm, don't look at what I'm working on here. It's not finished yet. It's not perfect, right? Or are you the type of person that says, yeah, man, give me some, give me some critique here. This is, you know, I'm, this is just, this is in process. You know, I want, I want your critique now when I can make changes, not at the end when I can't. Um, so, you know, be open to opinions. Know that the, the design process isn't about getting it right the first time. You know, it's, it's all about just iterating and making it better and making it better and making it better. Sketch like crazy, you know, capture stuff in meetings. Um, as far as additional collaboration, mix up your daily routine. This sounds so simple, but it is such an effective thing to take breaks. If you have a project you're working on, go meet at a coffee shop. Go have lunch together. Go do shots together. Do something. Like, go to the park. Do, just get, get out. Break it up. Um, take plenty of breaks. Make the, the client part of the team rather than a spectator. I think we've, we've talked about that throughout, throughout this presentation. Then go celebrate some more. Basically, our message is get to know the people around you, understand, take interest in their lives. If, if it's not going to make your work better, at least it's going to give you somebody else to do a shot with at the end. And you all, you're all going to like each other, like working together. Yep. All right, that's, that's it. it. Yeah, thanks. thanks. So we have, um, it's about 11 o'clock. We have plenty of time for, for questions and that. So, um, and I'm, I'm happy to flip through, back through the deck if there's, there's something you want me to show. Yep. So you, uh, you guys mentioned about the fact that Sometimes you're overloaded on certain things or and you know, as far as the flow, resourcing. Mm -hmm. And you guys might have things you're working on copy wise and design, three things, the devs get emptied, but you're you know, and and you kinda of mentioned it with the the Photoshop versus a browser thing, mm -hmm. if there's yeah. a dev available. I'm just wondering if you could elaborate more on when those things don't mesh where you really, really, really need that dev resource at that point, but there's not available, or vice versa, where design copies, they're just guys are loaded and devs are ready. I wonder if you could talk about that a little bit more. Yeah, sure. Um, so this is tricky. <laughs> um, this is where uh, our fabulous project manager comes into play, and um, she's on the lookout for this, this type of thing, and she's... Um, essentially in charge of, of resourcing and, and making sure that the right people are available at the right time. Now, granted, not every project goes at, you know, as, smooth, as smooth and all the milestones hit and there's not delays and that type of thing. That makes sense. Um, so I, I think when we've been in this situation in the past is that we get creative with it. You know, we, we solve the problems. We say, okay, well, we got these things and there's this conflict. Okay, what can we do about it? 
can this person switch over to this project and help here? Can we hurry up and get this part of this done sooner? Can we, can we shift things around a little bit? And, and oftentimes, we're able to make it work. Do you, do you buy that? Yeah. I, um, also, I, I tend to meet with our, our project manager, Mandy, about once every three weeks. We kind of plan ahead. Like we, we, we have a huge calendar, and we just write every project that's coming up. We have the different colored markers, and we write it all in. And, and we start to line up additional help. Like if we're going to need help, let's get it on the board now and know where it's going to come in and where it's not. Um, so it's, it's been a pretty effective thing. Mostly it's planning. And I think it's also just, um, as you saw, we, we involved our clients so much in the upfront process. We're really honest with our clients about what's, what's happening and what's going on. Yeah. So if there's timing issues, you know, um, Josh is our account lead. He, he's done a great job of, of kind of training us to just be like, okay, man, look, we can absolutely do that, but it's going to take a little bit longer. And, and yeah. saying that out loud and, and, you know, everybody's a person. So the client's like, okay, understood. Yeah. Or they're like, no, we need to get it done. So yeah. then we have to talk to the other client about that, I guess. And, and one of those things is he always says, I hate surprises, right? So the, 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 with the more lead time we have to head those things off, the easier it is to, to, to make those things work for the client. And yeah, they're, they're, they're reasonable. The, the other part of it, too, is that our team, our team's awesome. Like, they're like, yes, I will get this done by this date. And they are committed to it. And they, and they, they rock it out. And it gets done. Uh, he's, he's got the mic. You mentioned uh, time and the team rocking out and getting it done. So do you guys typically fix your projects based on scope or time? Um, you know, how does your scheduling work? I'm just kind of curious. Um, yes. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, we, we typically uh, fix the scope, and then from that scope, we create timing off of it. And sometimes, you know, a lot of times that it, it changes as we're going through the process. So um, there might be times when we think it's going to take this long, and, and based on decisions that were made up here, then that might change. And there's a bit of wiggle room in everything. So it's not a, you would never be able to look at a, a statement of work and say, Here's, here's all the, the timing that was in that, and then look at the actual project and say, this, yeah, they match up perfectly. They, they don't. You have anything to add to that? That's right. Okay. I have one thing to add, sorry. Oh, good. One, one other thing that we do is, um, and I know Gaslight does this as well, any like, really good development type shop would do this, but we time box. So there's this notion of we've got to get this scope done for a client. A few of our, in, a few of our clients are in here, and they know that we get that done. But it's obvious that we're like, there's a lot of other things that have taken like a month longer, they're gonna be paying more money. But we're not like hitting them with the bill after the fact. It's like way up in advance. This, this should happen no matter if you're an agency or an internally run organization. But it's just sort of like a, an agreement. It's like, like yet another term and condition in your working arrangement that, hey, if something's gonna take longer, someone's gotta be accountable for it. That time isn't just coming from anywhere. Actually, Erica, I love, I love this quote. <laughs> This isn't a buffet. I remember her saying that to me. A while back. <coughs> I think that should apply. It should, should have a mind. This isn't a buffet. You're whatever you're. Yeah, so this is, this is like, this, this table here is like, a lot of it's the ample crew here. So um, we had to be real honest because everybody's here to, to say, no, that, was, that wasn't right. You didn't do that right. That's uh, not how we do it. Yeah, yeah that's not, I've never seen this process before. Um, <laughs> so, and we have clients in the room, too, so we have to be really honest. Um, so, and we're all open to talking about this. You know, we, we, we really wanted to share this. Um, it's, it's a bit of a, this is the under the hood type of stuff that we do. And this is really, this process stuff is what takes up so much of our, you know, day in and day out. Um, and then I'm sure if you would ask any of these folks, they'd be, they'd be happy to, to elaborate on, on that stuff. Hi. Hi. Did you work on the Paycor website, on the Paycor interactive yes. stuff? Yes. Mm -hmm. Because of... Uh, my friend Nate and I work upstairs at the Energy Alliance. Yeah, I know. Uh, we've seen you on the elevator. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. all the time. And, and you're all doing exciting stuff like going to play basketball and... Uh, yeah, football. yeah, that's us. <laughs> anyway, um, <laughs> is, is there anything you can share about the 
you know, working with Paycor about developing that. You know, it, it's kind of fun that something we use every week to enter our time and all that, you know, is, is created by someone who's so close by. Is, is there anything you can uh, share about? Um, we've, we've done some, some of the app work, but I think what you're referring to, um, we've done some of the UI that, that's helped that along, but we, we've, we, we're, we're more responsible for their marketing site and everything on the outside of that. Um, we've done some, some of their internal projects and some of their, their apps, um, but um, yeah, I, I, I wish I could say that we did that, but we didn't. <laughs> cool. Thanks. Uh, <clears throat> some questions about uh, uh, user testing and um, UX. Uh, so you're putting together styles, your tiles, you know, you know, maybe that kind of orange on gray kind of thing. What, uh, at what point do you find out if that's really going to work? <laughs> yeah, that's a good question. Um, oftentimes it's in, in, the, uh, in the actual development stage. You know, the, the clickable prototypes help us in that. They give us some insight, but yeah, once again, it's not until things are real that you, you, can, you can see if the, these are good decisions or not. For EBTH, um, it, that was a, a pretty long uh, development cycle. <clears throat> so that gave us plenty of time to go back and through and test it and really look at um, how, how the UX experience was, was playing out. And um, you know, to the surprise of our client, we came back um, before, you know, before the first, I think it was around the, the first development review they had, and said, here's a document of these are the things that we'd recommend changing right now. Like, we know we just designed this, and you probably aren't expecting this, but these are the things that aren't working. These are decisions that we made that thought they were good decisions, but it turns out they're just confusing. And so we had every, every, everybody you know, testing it and looking at, at that lens. And through that, we were able to um, you know, head off what, what, I would have, what I would have said is being some, some pretty major setbacks um, once we actually got it to launch. So that's um, another thing that we're, we're continuing to figure out. Um, you know, when, when we can test it and, and, and whatnot. And we've done um, projects for, once for a client, um, Learning Ally, I think Kevin's probably the best person to, to tell you what, what they do. Learning yeah. Ally? Beck, okay. <laughs> they, uh, they basically take uh, textbooks and then turn them into recordings for the blind and dyslexic. <clears throat> so we, we had to create both the marketing site and the, the, uh, the product itself that was gonna allow people to to understand what that is and, and create that that site, and, and I'll tell you what, man. Like, if you're going to come up with some some copy and design that's going to speak to people that either one can't see, so they need as much text as possible to understand, but you're also writing and, and designing to a person that's dyslexic. The more words, the worse. So it's got to be super visual and easy to go down. So that was probably a that was yeah. a huge challenge. Yeah. Yes, and then to parents and then to educators and yep. lots of lots of audiences there. So for that uh, for that project. Um, we, we actually went into a full blown out user testing. And so we had, um, we, we created a prototype <clears throat> and it was uh, a little bit more than, than what we, we shared before. Um, but it was, it was, it, it had a little bit more, um, I guess more design to it, so a little bit more style, but it was like the whole setup process. And, 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 and we, we went to uh, Philly and, and we did a two day testing of it and went through and saw where the major stumbling blocks were and were able to refine and, and then uh, pull that into the actual end product. Can you talk a little bit more about the uh, prototyping, the goals of the prototyping process, especially in relation to the, the design theme process uh, and how those are different or, or similar, because it mm. seems like, you're, um, to me, um, you know, you're, I don't know, maybe I'll just listen to what you have to say. Yeah, all right, sure. <laughs> um, you know, if you've ever, if you've ever um, taken a, a web page and, and removed the style sheets from it, and you, and you see that it's, um, you know, it's basically a page with links and blocks, and you can see how the structure of it's set up. I would say it's similar to that. It's like the prototype, even though it has some basic styles to it, um, just that's, that they're inherent with Twitter Bootstrap, 
um, it's really just what, what furniture is in the room. And uh, the design theme is more about the actual presentation of it. So how, how all the markup's going to make it look and um, you know, what that experience is going to look like and feel like and all that type of thing. Um, the, the, the prototyping, you know, I, I think there's some, there's definitely some overlap. So, you know, as a designer, there's the urge to, um, to make it be the design theme when you're prototyping. Because I'm a designer and like I care about what type size it is and how it's consistent and what the spacing is and all these things. And I have to fight that urge and say, Ugh, it's coming, you know? Let's just get through this. Let's just get what's, what needs to be on the page and make sure that this functionality is represented, that these actions are represented, that these things fit together, that all these things are thought about. But by doing that in the prototyping, it just helps so much because all those decisions that you made, like, oh, I think this in this layout, this, this button's going to go here and this one here. And then you see it and you're like, man, that doesn't make any damn sense. Why would I do that? And so then you start shifting, you move things around, you move things around. And so when you get actually into the, the, the design theme and the, the page types, and those decisions were, were made, and it just makes it so much smoother to get through. Do you have the client use the links? Do you have the client use the prototype? Yeah, yeah, client gets in there, they know exactly what to do. It's, it's amazing, like, we didn't know. Like, when we did this, we're like, Oh, like the page inventories didn't work. Maybe this, this won't work either. But they, they get it. They, they, get, they get in there and they click around. It's, just, it's a website. It feels like a website. And they're just instantly like, oh, oh, yeah. Even though this is a gray box, this is image, I know there's an image there. And I know there's a button here. I know there's a caption here. I know that, I know that these interactions, these buttons do. I know what they do because they're, they're labeled and they make sense. Or they might say, I don't know what this does. And you say, oh, OK, well. or you know, how do I sign up for this here? Here's what I want to do. And it's just so easy, it's so easy to then make those changes um, in, the, in that stage, as opposed to shuffling Photoshop documents around and all that stuff. <laughs> how did you folks settle on sort of the base of your process. Um, like for us in development, we do, you know, the words waterfall versus agile get thrown out a lot. Mm -hmm. and how do you guys kind of determine where you should pick some of these concepts and how you uh, retrospect and iterate yeah. on your, de your design process? Um, we talk about it, really. Um, that happens oftentimes at the statement of work phase. Um, when we're planning the project, We'll, we'll say, uh, oftentimes, you know, our project manager will say, here's, here's how I think, this, this project seems similar to this project. Here's the, pro the process we use for that. Surely this will be the process we use for that. And, and, and probably nine times out of 10, I go, um, Mandy, we need to talk about this. I need to understand this a little more. And we actually had that conversation. Okay, what's, what's, you know, what, what, what does this mean? What does this mean? What, what is this step? What is this expectation? Okay, what if we change the process to do this? Is there any way we can get this done faster? Does this need to take that long? Can we remove this from this chunk because we know the client, we've, we've worked with this client on three projects and we probably don't need this here. And we, we literally, um, from a process standpoint, go through and, and define that up front so that we, we can set expectations um, uh, on the upfront with them. The other thing is that um, most of the stuff that, that has been in this deck and the, the process changes we've been through is when we're pissed, you know, when we're like, man, this stinks. Why is this not, why is this not working? It should work. And we talk about it. We have conversations about it. Um, and that can come from, you know, some of the partners talking about it to, you know, talking about with any of our any of our coworkers and saying, you know what, there's got to be a better way, or you know, everybody's reading different things and we're sharing stuff and saying, hey, there's this other process. This is a really great blog post about this. How could we try this out? Let's. Oh, this is interesting. And it's not that we're fickle um, about our process and we change things like all the time. And we, we you know we don't have focus. It's more about being intentional about what we want to try to do and what we want to try to improve. Is that, is that enough of an yeah. answer? Yeah. Thanks. 
Uh, do you get a client sign off, uh, like phase by phase? You know, that you get to pick the one design style, for example, so you don't yeah. go back and change stuff? Absolutely. Okay. Yes. And we're. we're um, pick one or mix a bunch together? <laughs> yes. Oh, boy. Um, I just think something would be nice to elaborate on, being that I'm the newest member of the Ample team. It's just, you know, I've worked at uh, bigger agencies, and, you know, you're, you're part of the design team, and then there's the developer team where wherever they sit in the building, you know, and, um, you know, you, you, work, you meet with the client, and with the client, you and, you know, the project manager meet, you, you learn what they like, what they want, and you talk to them, like, okay, I can do this, I can do that, we're going to make all this work. And then it's like, you go, you spend two weeks designing, what, what you want, what they want it, and then you send it out to the developer, and the developer's like, yeah, that ain't, we can't do that. That's not gonna work. Right. So what's, I think what's the most important thing that I've taken out of being new to this process is a developer is, you know, you're, you're not just the design team. You have one developer, you got one designer, you got project manager, you're on there in, in the meeting, and you know, I might say, you know, yep, yeah, we can do that to the client, and then you know, one of these developers, Ryan or Taylor or something, trying to chime in like, I know you want to do this, but the site's going to be responsive. That's not going to work in a responsive site. But let's problem solve. We can still do this. I, we can maybe t tweak it so it kind of works like that, but this is probably going to be a better solution. And to me, that's huge because that just saved me two weeks of designing something that we can't even use anymore. Yeah. So I think that's the biggest thing I've taken out of having not just individual teams, but at being a smaller company, we can work together and solve things as a group rather than leading me down a path I might not turn out. Yeah, that's a good point, is, is that everyone on our team's constantly trying to improve the end product. It's not just, okay, I'm the designer and I want to get it done my way, or I'm the, I'm the writer and, and this is how many words need to be on the page and it needs to say this stuff. But it's constantly, even our developers are like, hey, I got this idea. You know, I, I know you laid it out this way, but I got this idea. And the designers are like, all right, let's hear this. Let's, let's, how, how is it going to make an improvement? Or, you know, someone's testing it and says, this just doesn't make sense to me. You know, can you guys take a look at it? And it's so easy to say, no. Like, you missed your window. We're moving on. You know, and sometimes that happens. But everyone wants to hear it out. And everyone says, OK, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to understand what, it, what it is you're saying. And I want to make it better. And this is obviously important. And it's something worth talking about. Anything else? Anybody? Okay. Uh, I'm just kind of curious on your conversation with your clients regarding prototypes. Um, how do you not get them um, sort of so uh, hung up on the layout and the elements and kind of have that conversation with them so they understand that this is merely a, uh, you know, a prototype as right. opposed to, you know, um, uh, sometimes uh, in past experiences, I find that those conversations would be kind of odd and yes. difficult and uh, just kind of curious how you kind of overcome that and how you take charge. Hmm. Um, it's, not, it's not always the easiest conversation. Um, it's, not a, it's, it's different, yeah, from, from client to client, obviously. Um, I, I don't know if there's a, if there's a, a single answer to it. Um, you know, in the... Once again, in the statements of work, we, we define what our process is. So if we are going to build prototypes, we'll at least list what a prototype is. And oftentimes, um, before that meeting, we'll send a recap of that. So this is what to expect. I think that's a lot of, a lot of times you know, part of the problem is, is that the clients don't know what it is they're going to see. And so if you can, if you can um, just soften that a little bit by just saying, hey, you know, just so you know, this is, this is what we're going to review in this, in this meeting. Um, and sometimes, it, and what's great about prototypes is that you can say, here's the link to it. Here's the link. Go ahead and review it ahead of time. So that when you walk into the room, it's like, oh, OK. I, I, I get, I get they, they've done something here, and I've seen it ahead of time. Now let's talk about what that is. So um, you know, sometimes um, some clients that are a little bit more um, a little bit more savvy than others get it quicker. Um, but since it is, it, it does function like a, an actual website than in something they're accustomed to in the browser. Um, it seems like uh, it's just enough. It's just enough to make it seem real to them. 
And so that conversation, you know, obviously is, is different, but um, it just seems, it seems easier when you, when you do a little bit of that, that work up front. You know, to build on that, I think it's also that we're having a conversation or a meeting almost every step. When, when we give a deliverable, unless it's something they've seen before, and this is like round two or round three, we tend to be in the same room or at least on the phone walking people through and describing things. That always, I think there's a tendency now that it's so easy to just shoot it over, like, here you go, on deadline, let us know if you have any questions, you know, and, and just being able to send it over, and talking through it, walking through it, being in the same room has, has really helped that process. Holding their hand at every moment, I guess. Yeah, I, I mean, that, that's it. I mean, that's, that's one way of saying it, but um, once again, um, it's something that, that, I, that I've, I've said throughout this presentation is it's that gradual, um, gradual engagement. It's, it's pulling them along the way with you and not going too far where, where they feel uncomfortable that you've made decisions that um, maybe you've stepped your bounds um, a little bit. Uh, and so that they, it's just a way of gaining, gaining trust with, with, with the client and they just want to feel like they're part of it. You know, they, they, it's amazing. They just they, they, they've hired you to come in and help solve their problems, but they're their problems. You know, they, they're going to own it when you're done. When you're when you're done, and you move on to the next project, they, like it's it's theirs. They own it. They own that, and they they don't want to own something that they didn't have input on, that they don't feel good about, that they're going to you know a year from now, you know, call another agency to to fix. So I, I want to build on this just a little bit here too, and more from like the business, business end of things to let you know how people who are not as educated and familiar about this process as we, most of us all are, perceive things too. And this has been my, I'm, I'm the person that connects to the clients and has to like basically educate them through, um, you know, providing better empathy through education, exactly what the whole purpose of this conversation, this whole conference is about. So Don Draper, not too terribly long ago, maybe two, three episodes ago in Mad Men was talking to someone and um, this guy said, you know, Don, um, the, the clients, we hire you to take our anxiety away. So just think about that for a second. Someone up the chain, whoever it is who's paying for the work, your boss, your client, whoever, does not trust you right off the bat. So you gotta build the trust. So the, I think the most important thing that you can do is you guys should go create a version of like this presentation without all the, you know, it, the beautiful design necessarily, but just examples of all of the deliverables, like visual examples. People don't care about specs. Like I, IT people care about specs to a certain degree, but ultimately visuals are what sells and, and, and develops trust between you and whoever that end client is. So this is like huge, huge, huge. And this is something that we did not get right off the bat. And actually one of our clients, um, Mike Schuster, who's a, an architect, we built an awesome site for them. It is a great collaboration. His whole process is to actually like build like a mock-up of something like on the fly, which is like incredible. So he, you can see something, and he actually kind of inspired us to kind of, especially me, to like lay it out on the table. Like, look, there, here's a site that's similar to yours, and literally each step of the way, here's what this gated review process is. Here's how we're going to actually make you part of the process. So there's no like, why am I paying these guys? You know, just x x x dollars to do this project doesn't make any sense. I don't know why I would do that. So it's going to be huge for even for like folks that say you don't have someone like me working with your team or a Mandy, this, this will help you help communicate what you're doing far more clearly. And I don't see people doing that. In fact, again, worked at bigger agencies. We did not do that. And clients were always just like, you know, same old shit. So, I mean, over and over again, I've been doing this for over 10 years and it took, you know, 10 to 12 years into it before we like, oh man, this is just like an easy thing. And now it's so silky smooth most of the time. So just a thought. Yeah, you can, you can, you can tell obviously um, that we're, we're eating our own dog food, right? Like we're, we're a team and, and if there's something that somebody wants to say, they grab the microphone and say it. Like that's just, that's just part of who we are. It's, it's really, you know, we're sharing the stage here, Kevin and I. But you know, it's the conversation where we're willing to hear each other out, and we're we're we we're not just willing, but we're really really excited to hear hear what people have to say. Yeah, in the back. Um, when you're in the process of your 
page styles and your, um, your page types. Do you work through the responsive design at the same time as the full design and um, yeah, we, um, development too? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a good question. Um, we, we talk about it. Um, the designers, if, they, if, it's a, if it is a responsive site, we know that up front. Um, and the, the designers and developers talk about it most of the time. But it's usually not until uh, we get into the actual like front end, like the markup that, uh, in the CSS that, that, that we, we, we deal with it at that point. Um, part of that is because uh, we have Ryan Merrill, who's awesome, and uh, he just, he's like a wizard with this stuff. He, th that's who he presented last year about this stuff, about responsive and Twitter bootstrap, and, and uh, you know, he's, he's just, he's magnificent at it. And, and what's kind of cool is that um, in the last month or two, the designers are, are, have, made, are, have stepped up a little bit and said, we want to learn how to do that. And so he's working with us to, um, to start doing uh, some of the front end work um, ourselves instead of having to have only one person who can do this skill. Now we can spread that out a little bit. It's kind of inspired us to, to concept that way too and write that way from my perspective to, to, to see what it's going to look like on that small screen and then to extend it from there. Like knowing, like as soon as we do a, a wireframe, being like, all right, well, what will this look like when we're on it? On yeah. Website. And when we How's that going to condense? When we identified that, um, I think it was about, I don't know, like I said, about a month or two ago, we had a, we had a lunch um, where all the designers and developers were in the room, and you know we got we had some lunch together, and we we pull, we, we pulled up the projector and and looked at code and talked about how can we make this stuff, how can we bring the designers in the fold here, and made some decisions there, and and then we're, we tried it out. It's like why not try it out. How many people like Risk, by the way? I told you. It's an awesome game. <laughs> <laughs> we, were, we were debating it. We are like, oh, no, man. Have you ever heard of Diplomacy? Uh, Anybody? Raise your hand if you've heard of Diplomacy. The greatest strategy game ever designed, 1963, I think. Yes. That sounds Give like... It a shot. That name just makes me, like, cringe. Like, oh, uh, <laughs> that's one evening I wish I had back. In the evening, it can take days. <laughs> yeah, sorry, that's one week. I wish I quest had for it. world domination. Come on, I'm good. <laughs> if I can get my kids to go to bed and my dogs not to eat stuff, yeah, I'm good. It's good. Was this the slide you, you mentioned? Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm just kind of curious. What book is it that you're reading to learn more about writing? that you had on your desk? Oh, yes. Uh, on Writing Well by William Zinzer. Yeah. It's so great. You'll it, find out that your emails are only need to be one sentence long. Yeah, it's, it's great in that um, I, you know, when, when I went to college, I was so excited to learn how to write. At least I thought I'd learn how to write. And um, I was very disappointed. I would say it's probably the most disappointment of my college courses was my writing courses because it just seemed like they're like, okay, well, we'll just well, you know, write this about this. All right, cool. So I'd write about it, and then it would be like, hmm, that's that's a C plus. Uh, but you can write it again. Just write it again. All right, all right. That's a, that's a D. <laughs> Why? <laughs> what? And then and then I'd write something like real quick and just like ah, just screw it. I don't even know. What Ah, there's that's that's a that's an A minus. What? Like why? I'm in these design classes learning why what makes good design, right? I'm learning all these principles about why why does design work? Why does this design work and not this design? And, and decisions on that and all these principles and they all build on one another. But in the writing, my writing classes, they never gave they never gave us those principles. And I think that's what this that that book really gets to is just here's some principles, real practical stuff that you can build on. But I, I'm, I'm still learning, for sure.
just going to ask a quick question about the style tiles and how they actually work. Because on the website, it's eliminate all the Photoshop iterations, save time. Then it says download this Photoshop template. So right. How, how, do they, how do they make things work faster and better? How does it actually work? Yeah, so it's, it is a Photoshop document. So um, these style tiles, let me flip to one of them. Oh. Oh, geez. And in the meantime, just because Rob didn't get good styles or good uh, good classes on writing, there are actually guidelines <laughs> that make writing good and bad. It's not just A, B, or C. Yeah. But there's there's some stuff and. Right. Um, th that book's a one and good one and two. A anytime that look, just look up some of the, the principles of news writing. Um, I think that's probably the most practical application to what we do um, as, as, as marketers or creating an application or, or really writing an email, which is basically what's most important, what's the summary, what's the next, next important thing, now give me more detail. And that's, that's pretty much our job as, as a writer. Condense, simplify, get the story across. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay, so the style tiles, yeah, you can see download the template. And the template is a Photoshop document. But like for this case, it's a lot easier to lay out this Photoshop document because I'm just picking typography and I'm, I'm seeing how that associates with one another and some of the navigation and, and a little bit of UI. Um, it's so much easier and quicker to do it when it's not in context to all the other decisions that you have to make as a designer. So in layout and full mock-up, you know, like I said, you, you're, you're, you're figuring out net, what the navigation style is, where the navigation's placed, um, what buttons are where, what copy says what, um, the general, just the general flow of the whole page. You don't have to make any of those decisions at all here. So it just makes it so much faster to get through this. Yes, it's another step in the process, but it's a step in which you're focusing feedback on just the visuals and not those other decisions. And so it's it just helps it just helps get uh, it just helps get you through quicker in the end. For whatever reason, people don't complain about Greek text either in this layout in this format. Like when we would show web designs and it would have Text and they'd be like, what is, I don't know what this is. What is this? Why does it say this? Yeah. But once again, like the prototypes, like the question that you asked about prototypes, we have to set this up. We have to set this up so the client understands what we're talking about. And, and sometimes we'll even send them to the style tell site and say, look, this is what we're doing. This is part of our process. Um, you should be educated about what you're about to see. And, um, and they, they're really receptive to it. It's been good. Once again, you don't know until you try. You know, we said, man, this sounds like a good idea. And I remember Bobby and I having this conversation like, is this going to work? <laughs> like, I don't know. Let's try it out for this client. You know, they seem pretty cool. And, uh, you know, it worked, and, 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 and we've been using them ever since. <coughs> Anything else? All right. Well, thanks a lot, guys. That was really fun. Thanks.